I would like to call it our thankful series. And we're going to be coming from Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the 39th, 43rd verses. I usually read in King James, but I'm going to do the um, I'm going to do the NIV this morning. So Leviticus 23, 39 through 43. So beginning with the 15th day of the month, after you have gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord seven days. The first day is a day of Sabbath, rest, and the eighth day is also a day of Sabbath, rest. On the first day, you are to take branches from luxuriant trees, from palms, willows, and other leafy trees, and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in temporary shelters for seven days. All native born Israelites are to live in such shelters. So your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Amen. May the God, may God add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of this word. So we are in a season of transition. We are in autumn, which is a name for the season of the calendar, which comes from the Latin word autumnus, with the root word inferring the passing of the year. The term fall is also used for autumn. Fall was likely a, a a deviation from old English words, fiel and fielen, both of which means to fall from height. So it is when the weather gets colder, more windy, and the leaves begin to dry and turn colors and fall from the trees. In autumn, winter turns cooler. Of course, the weather turns cooler because we're nearing the winter. So we're transitioning from hot weather to cool, to cold weather, and we're somewhere in between, going up and down. It is a time of transition where the daylight hours are the same as the hours of the night. And we remember autumn, especially because of thanks and thanksgiving and celebration. And it's harvest time. It usually comes after the hot of autumn, or I mean, autumn uh, ushers in the harvest time. And we have much to thank God about because what we've planted, what we've sown, we're reaping now or we expect to come in and we get to celebrate the God that provided, the God that gave us provision. We remember God in this season, whether we feel things are good or whether we think feel things are bad. But like the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything we give thanks, hallelujah. We give thanks whether we consider our harvest small or whether we're much, but whatever God gives, whatever God provides, whatever is our situation, we uh, approach it with a thankful heart. Hallelujah. And it's also a sabbatical year. It's a year that we would call Jubilee, where by faith we rest in the Lord. That's what we're celebrating this year, as it is a part of the seven sevens where God lets the calendar flip seven times and that he overthrows turns debt and he releases us from debt and he switches even as we see in the economic system things began to change and and the poor get some relief out of their poverty in this season hallelujah in this year so it's another part of the celebration that god gives us glory be to god where we let the land rest so like that like the sabbatical years and like what we're talking about in the scripture today there are many celebrations observed during this season to thank God and to remember God for all that he has done. We just do Thanksgiving in the United States that happens to be in November. But in Leviticus 39, uh, uh, Leviticus actually it is the 40th uh, verse of, of uh, chapter 23. One thing we read, it says, on the first day, you are to take branches from luxuriant 
trees from palms and willows and other leafy trees and rejoice before your Lord God for seven days. They're waving these branches, waving these palms and having many programs and services where they're in jubilant celebration. But he wants it from luxuriant trees. That means lush, opulent, sumptuous, overabundant. It reminds me of our Thanksgiving time when our dinners are uh, extravagant and abundant, uh, overindulgent. We have more than enough of our favorite foods and our favorite de desserts that one family can't even eat in a day. It's a time of opulent celebration. Some people even have the cornucopias where they have stuffed with fruits and vegetables overflowing, showing the, the bounty of the harvest. So in today's scripture, it's a different kind of celebration, a different kind of Thanksgiving celebration. And this one is remembered in Jewish culture and it is God ordained. It is an annual celebration that has many names. Some call it the Festival of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, Festival of Ingathering. Some call it Sukkot. I don't know if I'm saying that right. S-U-K-K-O-T, which they say uh, is a, a Hebrew name. And this, this year, they celebrated it. They just happened to celebrate it in the September 20th through the 27th. That's when the uh, Jewish culture celebrated this holiday that I'm reading about today. But I'm picking it because I'm picking the parts in scripture where God showed us that he wants us to stop, take remembrance, and give thanks. We don't go like business as usual. Sometimes you just have to turn around and say, thank you. I remember Jesus healed a, a leprous man. He healed 10 actually in the Bible. And then only one came back and said thank you to him. Jesus took note of that because God appreciates when we're grateful and have a grateful heart and are reverent and not, com and not complaining as it's such a habit that's easily to get into. We could all complain about our situation, but isn't it more better just to be grateful and give thanks, hallelujah, help us keep our sanity? Who wants to be around negativity and negative people? Hallelujah, we want to be around things that are positive, otherwise that we can keep thriving and, and keep growing. Negativity devours and kills. We know that it's been tough. Oh, hallelujah. Even here, not just in the United States, but around the world, it seems like around two years since COVID began and shattered the world as we know it. We've witnessed death of our loved ones and those that we love and those friends that we didn't get a chance to say goodbye to, that we thought we'd see them again, but they snuck out of here and it wasn't just COVID. They were dying from various diseases and various trap challenges going on and they were just gone. Hallelujah. Is they're gone. And it has been tragic and heartbreaking. Some of us still haven't fully recovered. Hallelujah. But I encourage you to remember to give thanks no matter what life throws at you. Life happens and death is a part of life. If we excessively mourn, it's dangerous for our own mental health. We have to hold on to our faith in tough and trying times and have thanksgiving and gratitude in our heart. If not, we will drift into depression and overwhelming sorrow. And I'm saying choose life this morning, hallelujah. Choose life and live and in everything give thanks. Keep your faith in God and instead of cursing, bless him, hallelujah. We all know the story. Many of us know a story. We've read about a man in the Bible and his name was Job and Job lost everything. He lost his children. He lost his cattle, which were uh, like his prosperity. He lost his riches and his body was filled with disease. He lost his health. This tragedy came on him suddenly and pretty much all at the same time. But God never left Job. And Job never cursed God. He kept the faith. And after a season, after a season, and I don't know how long the season was, but I imagine it was a little while because he had been there so long. He said, his wife said, why don't you curse God and go on and die instead of doing that suffering? But he refused to curse his God. Hallelujah. And after a season, God rewarded him with double of all that he lost. How do we keep the faith? 
Hallelujah. We give thanks in everything. We give thanks. That helps to fuel our faith. Philippians 4 and 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Hallelujah. You may feel like you don't have anything to rejoice about. Hallelujah. But if you have a grateful heart and you begin to praise God, he'll remind you, you've been here before. And if you trust me, I'll bring you through it again. You'll make it. You will be all right. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 5, and 6 in the NIV says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So yes, we're praying in the troubled times, in the tough times. Hallelujah. We're praying, but we're praying with thankfulness. We're praying with gratitude, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, remembering not to murmur and not to complain, hallelujah. In everything, we are thankful. We bless the Lord and worship and praise no matter what. King David is another example I like to use this morning. King David had to flee for his life. He was being hunted by King Saul like he was an animal. In rough conditions, and in rough terrains. He lived in caves and in the wilderness and in enemy territory. He even had to go into enemy territory and act like he was mentally ill, act like he was crazy, foaming at the mouth so they wouldn't kill him. Hallelujah. But he did it trying to survive. And in all this, he never cursed his God, even though that God came to him as a little boy and said, you're gonna be king. You are the next king. And I guess when we get prophecy, He's from both. It sounds real good, and we think everything's going to be lovely and everything is going to be all right. But when there's a prophetic word on your life, when somebody tells you your end is going to be something great, you better believe that something in the middle, there's going to be some storms in the middle. There's going to be some tough times between you got that word, between the time that the dream came and the time that you realized the dream. Anybody know a dreamer? Yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody know a dreamer? I know a dreamer other than Martin, but I tell you what, before the dream that Martin had came to close to being coming to pass, many died, many were beaten, many were suffering, but it didn't stop the dream, it didn't stop the promise, hallelujah. So here's King David, he had a dream, he had a promise, but now he's being hunted by a dog and having to foam at the mouth. And in all of that, he didn't curse his God. Instead, he worshiped. And Instead, he praised God at every opportunity, and we read it in the book of Psalms. After a season, then God blessed him, and the promises came to pass. Yeah. But while he was running for his life, while he was hiding, while he was at war and, and, and fighting in battles and trying not to get killed, he was blessing the Lord. He had a heart of gratitude. He was thanking God, and in Psalms 18, 49, we hear it say, therefore, will I give thanks unto thee, O God, among the heathen and sing praises unto thy name. That's what David was doing. I may be among heathens and those that don't know you and those that don't like you and those that want to kill me. But I'm going to praise you. Hallelujah. At all times, I'm going to praise your name. And in Psalms 30 and 4, he writes, sing unto the Lord. Oh, ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Uh, do I have any saints in here? Do I have a witness? Hallelujah, this morning, that we can sing unto the Lord, no matter what we're going through. And then in Psalms 35 and 18, this great king, who had a, an anointing as king, but who had to hide and pretend like he was uh, while he was being hunted by the current king. Yeah. He even said it in Psalm 35, 18, I will give thee thanks. In the great congregation, I will praise thee among much people. That's what he's telling God. I may be running now. I may be being hunted, but when I get before your people, I'm going to praise you in front of the great congregation. And we know he did it because there's a story in the Bible of how when he brought the, the covenant, the ark from another place and put it in his rightful place in the church, David did a dance, hallelujah, before the Lord that says he danced 
out of his clothes. Hallelujah. He kept his promise to his God. We do it. When you give me a million dollars, Lord, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But sometimes when we get our blessing, when we get our increase, we do the opposite. We don't remember what we told God, but David kept his promise and praised God in the great congregation. Then he wrote again in Psalms 75 and 1, he says, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that in thy name is near thy wondrous works to declare. When we worship, we're declaring how mighty our God is, hallelujah. And when he first got on the run, when he first found out the man, the King Saul was trying to kill him and he had to run for his life, hallelujah. He went somewhere wailing. He wrote Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, we say it. We say it all the time. But do you know what the man had to go through that wrote that song? Hallelujah. He didn't praise it when everything was up. He praised it when everything was topsy-turvy and upside down. And he didn't even know what he'll have breath in his body in the morning. Hallelujah. But he said, I bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we worship even though times are tough? Can we worship even though things may be the opposite of what we dreamed? Can we give thanks? For what we have left, I encourage you, let your hands, let your limbs be like the trees that God talked about, the luxuriant trees, and lift up your hands with me and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Wave your hands unto the Lord and say, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless you. I may be sick, but I'll bless you. Hallelujah. My money may be funny. But I'm blessing you anyhow. Glory to the God. My kids may be acting up, but I give you praise today. Glory to God. I may not know how I'm going to pay all my bills. My bills may be past due, but I lift up my hands in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. My luxurious limbs, the limbs that you gave me, and I bless you with them. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord.